My name is Dr. Fox T. Sierra. I've been a devoted follower and student of the true and living God, Dr. Malachi Dior, for seven years. After reading one of the Panthers of Peace, I became aware of our divine rights as God. And now I'm honored to give you a chance to hear the Grand Master, Dr. Malachi Dior. That's why it says, 
God is not a man. A man is an animal. A man is a mammal. A woman is an animal. And even that's a lie. I mean, correct that one. Women are mammals. No men breastfeed. You understand? These are lies that must be rectified and corrected and straightened out for us before we can get back on track and get our brain working right again. Because if you're going to use the Bible, then use the Bible. But use the Bible right. And when you tell a person, I'm a living soul, what do you say? What does that mean? I said, I am a living soul. I am a spiritual being that is alive. I have soul. Your brother will tell you, you are soul people. They call James Brown the... They call Aretha Franklin the... And then they try to get Michael Bolton to call the blue-eyed soul brother. Because he was is able to semi-express himself vocally like us. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He admits that we have soul and that he doesn't. He said, well, you people got that, you know, that thing, you know, you're colorful, you're all moving. You know, you all, that, that soul, you soul people. <laughs> they like, they don't soul. Do you know what soul means? Son people. Children of the sun. You know why? Because we get our energy from the sun. And they get cancer from the sun. <laughs> they burn. As the sun comes, we get more do and more fun. We like, we want to do things. That's why we get in trouble. <laughs> sun gives us energy. But he admits to not having soul. By calling you a soul. That's a confession that he don't have one. That's what we got sold. That's what they told him today. Right? Then what do you mean? Now, if I have soul, and the Bible says I breathe into you the breath of life and you became a living soul, and that soul is in me is from God, then God is in me. Could you please tell me who he is? <laughs> this is clear. This is biblical teaching. This ain't me. Right. Don't get mad at me, this is what the Bible says. God said, I believe you in the man, the brother life, and man became a living soul. God gave his soul, James Brown, the king of soul. Mm -hmm. That's not you got soul. And they admit that they don't have soul. But if you don't have soul, then you don't have what in you. You don't have soul. And that's why Jesus said, you are of your father the devil. You are the liar and a murderer of this again. Is he still lying? Yeah. Is he still murdering? Yeah. Everything else. He's lying now. He's murdering now while we're standing here in this class trying to get our folks, our facts to right, right? He's out there murdering some of us now. If he's not doing it in Uganda or in Zimbabwe or Sudan or Ethiopia, he's doing it. But you don't care because you don't have the cancer in your family. You forgot that we in Africa are your family. You forgot about us. The moment you become intelligent, instead of you thinking about coming over and helping us build, you go right here and surrender to him and get a job and work for him for a pension. A fifth of it all, a pension. <laughs> That's what it means. Look it up. Pension is a fifth. All you is a fifth. But you won't come home. Let me ask you another question. This question is. <laughs> Do you think the Heavenly Father really loves you? Don't lie. Yes. Yes. Do you want proof? Yes. You don't want proof? Yes. 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 The Heavenly Father, the person that is responsible for you being here, one created you, your mother, your father, one day, you can see you, you can see you with You can see you with You know what? The kids can't do that because they were born with their hands in the or their arms don't work. No one does. And of course it does. You should get back. They came to my brother and got the wheel here. And he said, wow, that was fun to Suppose I was here. So the heaven, your heavenly father made it possible for you to be totally mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you how he loves you. You may not understand it. If you don't, I don't feel you'll never be around me later. All right? You with me now? All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Christ, the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is responsible. The Heavenly Father is responsible for what? The Heavenly Father is responsible for all things. Right? The Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father is responsible for both the trees. Right? And water. The Heavenly Father makes the diamond. The Heavenly Father makes gold and platinum. And oil. Doesn't he? Well, if you were the Heavenly Father and you had a host of children of different colors, yeah, you with me? and you had wealth, I mean, unlimited wealth, would you trust the wealth to a dumb child? Would you trust the wealth to an evil child? You would trust the wealth of the family to what you call an intelligent, compassionate child like your self. Correct? Come on with it, huh? So God, as they call him, Heavenly Father, loving one, feels something special about you people. You know why? Because he put gold in Africa. He put diamonds in Africa. He put platinum in Africa. He put oil in Africa. He put all of the richest resources on the planet up under your feet. He did not put it here. That was one of the children he did not feel was intelligent enough or compassionate enough to share with the world. But he put it under your feet in Africa. And everybody knew you were compassionate. Everybody knew you were loving. They came over to Africa and they stole it. And they beat you up and they imprisoned you and they dragged you over here and removed all love of Mother Africa out of you. All sense of identity out of you. And then took what the Father had left you with and did what with it? Co-created gambling, prostitutes, drug trafficking, these crazy movies to teach children how to kill themselves. You understand that? But the Heavenly Father trusted you with it. He said, well, why don't he help us? Because the first thing was, he entrusted you with it because you were supposed to be intelligent enough not to be tricked by this man. You understand? But he loves us. He gave it all to us. We gave it away. <laughs> yes, my brother. Uh, uh, Father, you were saying earlier that uh, you said Jesus was never born. And then you said, later you talked about part of his life. Meaning that the Jesus story as given to you in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And remember, each one of those books were written, the, the, the left was 42 years after him, 43 years after him, 52 years after him, and then 96 were those books after him. They were written after the day of Pentecost, all except for Luke. Now, Matthew, if you turn to Matthew, chapter 9, verse 9 in the Bible, you find that Matthew is talking about Matthew. Right in the Bible, Matthew says, and the tax collector Matthew. You know what I mean? That means that that book was not written by Matthew. So his story of the birth of Jesus in Matthew can't be real. They haven't even told you who wrote the book of Matthew. You got a Bible? Somebody mm -hmm. got a Bible with it? Open Matthew to 9 9. Alright? Meanwhile, while he's doing that, if you go into the beginning of the book of Mark, Luke, he tells you, I only wrote this book because the other disciples wrote this book and I think I'm smarter than them. That's right, Luke 1. So that book can't be trusted. The only book you can trust is the book of John, son of Zebedee. And he was also the writer of the book of Revelation, which the Christians must say anything was John the Baptist. Because they both were called John in the book of St. John in the first two chapters. When they refer to John the Baptist as all you that in life. And they think that that's talking about the course of the book in the book. You with me? You got it? What is that? It says, and as Jesus passed forth from death, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the custom. See that? What book is that? Matthew. Shouldn't he be saying, and as Jesus walked by, he saw me? He said, a man named Matthew in the book of Matthew 9 9. 
He's not talking about God. Now again, Christians, who wrote the book of Matthew? It's not calling, it's not called the book of Matthew. It's called the book of Matthew according to Matthew. You follow? So if you don't know who wrote the book, how do I know whether the devil wrote the book or not? So I, the only way I can tell is if I match it to books that are concerned. And when I do, I find that the book of Matthew says when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, let us have that My God, my God, my God, forsaken me. And I said, oh, okay. But then when I turn to the book of Psalms, and the 22nd chapter, in the very first verse, the second verse, right, I had exact same thing said thousands of years before Jesus was born. That day. And now I'm worried. Because the Christians are going to count, you know what they're going to do? They're going to say to you, well, that's because he was, that was the spirit of Christ. And then I say, okay, show me somewhere where it says that. Well, you just have to believe. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, 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 I don't. You know why I don't? Because the Bible says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make me. If you don't tell me I just have to depend on faith, I want a fact. Because Christ said I would know. What you're trying to find out is if Christ was not born, then how can he be the character of the Bible? What I'm saying is, within the hundred year period that they identified Jesus of Nazareth, the Dead Sea Scrolls or the Qumran tablets have proven that he did not exist during that period of time. That a hundred years before that incident was a man called Yeshua. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't mean that Jesus didn't exist. It means that the story of Jesus, the Christian concept of it, did not exist. The concept of a star traveling across the sky and God in the wild, and I think we went over that two weeks ago. Right? They, they saw the star of Bethlehem, the wise men, impossible. You know why? Because stars do not stop and go. When you look up at a star, it is already gone. Do some research. When you look up at the stars at night, they are not there. You're seeing the tail of reflection where they have moved on. If anybody does any study, they'll find that to be a fact. You understand? So ain't no star could have guided no three wise men across no sky. A craft could, and it was going to, that's that UFO stuff. I said, no, it's not, because there wasn't no such word as UFO back in the Bible. That's that Exodus cloud guiding the children of Israel stuff. That's that Exodus where the light in the day, and it's a dark, and a light at night, and a cloud in the day. That's that Ezekiel stuff where he sees a crack come down the land in front of him. That's that Matthew or uh, Revelation 21 stuff when they say that they see a crystal city coming down out of heaven and Jesus is in it. That's that one. Ain't no UFO stuff. The Bible is saturated with stories of flying men, they call them angels, flying through the heavens, coming to earth, and Daniel. Walked, Daniel, while in the field, was approached by a man who walked up to him and said, I'm Gabriel. He said, that's the man, Gabriel. So Gabriel was once a spirit. But when, when Daniel saw him, he saw him as a man. Angels come down into physical form and walk amongst you. And it tells you in the Bible, be careful, because that stranger you entertain might be an angel. You understand? This is all there. I'm in it. The scriptures confirm what they call the UFO. What they try to do is trip me. They try to take two coffee sauces and draw this. And they call that a flying sauce. And they say, these beings came from beyond the stars out here, flew down into one of our into our spheres, down the path those you know, seven spheres, and down here in our atmosphere flying around. And I say, don't be deceived. You know why I say don't be deceived? Because this thing is aerodynamic. You know what that means? That it was built to fly here. <laughs> no craft from another dimension or from another solar system that flies through our universe where there is no air needs to be aerodynamic designed. Flying forces are built here and flown around for people to see, to detour you from the reality of when that crystal city comes from you. 
come for you on this day. They don't want you to know that Sanenda, which is Jesus' name, who was also Tammuz of the angels of Mary, is on a craft on his way here for you, for what they call a rapture. They don't want you to realize that. But they need to keep you under Roman Christianity. They got to keep you thinking that he died on the cross for your sins. And all they can keep you believing he died on the cross for your sins, and you can't explain why you still sin, and you are confused. If you're confused, you can't get to heaven. Because it says you shall, uh, you have to know things before you can get set free. You cannot have things like, oh, one day he's coming back. You have to know to be free. And I came here to teach you things, to make you investigate things, so you will know. That is a simple flash of information that from henceforward, any one of you who never thought about that before, when you see a fire saw, you don't say, Give me something a little. Deep. I'm, I'm not buying apples no more. <laughs> Whenever they show you little gray men, they look like human beings because they have arms and legs and eyes and fingers. Be they three, four, five, or six, and you know that your environment, out of necessity, helps to shape your body. You know they have something to do with this. Something just like that, evolution, very similar to you. Because you are an evolutionary creature. And you're still evolutionary. Because most of our grandfathers were 44 jackets. Mm -hmm. Most of us now wear 34, 36, and 32. Our grandmother maybe had big hips. Mm -hmm. Right? Now we are women again. <laughs> so we are still evolutionary. Out of existence. What's that question? What's the feeling about the Slavery, the first thing about slavery is they lie. As usual, they lie. First thing you gotta get out of your mind is the word slave trade. Because nothing got traded, something got sold. If they would have traded us, we would have something to show for it. But if you trade cards, one card for another card. You with me? Alright. That's the step one. Next. We were already on this continent. This was a form of Egypt here. If I could put a map on the wall, you could take South America and stick it right back into the west coast of Africa. And it'll stick right up in there. All the islands of the Caribbean will stick right up in there. You take a map and look at the world map, and you can see that there was such a continent drift. All of, all of America and all of Arabia, because that little Saudi Arabia, the Red Sea or Reed Sea, you can tuck that back inside too and close it up and all that was us. This was, we were already here when they got here. When our great, great, great grandfather, Kan Kan Mansa Musa, sailed here, he was looking for relatives of his who were here when the planet and earth shifted. When that last incident took place 25,000 years ago, and it finally moved and it parted. And Africa was parted from Asia. And Africa was parted from what's referred to then as a maximum. For which they get the word Mexico. And we were already here. Native Americans, all the tribes come out of us. When they say Hopi, Indian, they're talking about the God of Egypt, Hopi. Don't believe me. Look it up. The all Mex, the Zuaz text. Who is that? That's us. You all you gotta do is go to South America and look at the lips of them and see them lips and them noses, because nobody wants to share the lips and noses with us. And nobody can share in textures of hair with us. And when they show you a statue of Buddha, Buddha got nappy hair. Now you go look at any statue of Buddha, it looks like somebody's food eating out of there one by one. <laughs> and then they say, well, they don't quit. Yeah, that's also an African hairstyle. <laughs> Buddha was you. The statue on Easter Island, look at that face. That's you. Many Americans all try to come out of you. The reason why some of them look oriental, you with me? Yeah. It's because of a Chinaman named what? Who shone? Who sailed here from China? This is on record. Land in California and walked across and encountered 
instead of me and Molly is always here, living here, mix in with them and produce amazing earth. All you have to do is look around this room and you can see that it is a lie that they went to one part of Africa and brought everybody here. Look at all these different noses and eyes and teeth. Man, they were taking us from everywhere. And some of us were already here, Native Americans. We are Native Americans too, you know. Anything that makes sense, we are up. <laughs> Anything that's nonsense, he didn't create. I ain't lying to you. Tell me if some of y'all here whose grandmother went by Native Americans. Let me see some hands. Whether you got a relative, whether you got a black or a Cherokee, or a Kinnikop, or what? Cinnamon? Shoshone? That's in your blood. Ask your mother and talk to your grandmother to find out. That is true. That's who you are. And all of it came out of Egypt into Sumat, into um, what is called Mali. We think about the Zoban tribe. Zoban is a short word for David. You know, a pope tried to represent the number by wearing a fish helmet. You know that half the pope there? If you look at it, it's a fish's head. It goes back to an ancient deity in Africa. Zoban. A being or, or from a star constellation called Cyrus A and B, who came as a pillion here and taught us things there. The Bible is just going back, that's why the Christians do the fish thing. That's why the folk wears a thick hat. Yes, indeed. Now that you read some of these books we have there, I have bitches by them, map, I try to follow them so close, so when they turn around green, I'm right there. <laughs> <laughs> The burning of the black church, the burning of the black church. <laughs> I read that the burning of the black church, he said the burning of the black church. Yes, the burning of the black church is a sign to you that God ain't there. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's orchestrated to tell you that God is not there. Now, that is the real reason. The other reason is to stir life. Because we are not responding to the harassment today. We were supposed to respond to the old day hoodies. They were always... We were supposed to respond to the Rodney King thing. We were the ones waiting. The fact that we're not responding is puzzling him. He wants to rouse us and he's going to rise and he's to pop some of us. We can kill us all but we multiply them fast. You hear me? But the real reason is for you to see, for me to see. If God is there, because if God is there, nobody's going to burn the church. Unless they want to make us believe that God goes home with the preacher. Because that could be a possibility. But Red always come out here, how he had a personal conversation with God. God spoke to his heart, and Jesus is supposed to be my personal Savior. So, uh, like I said last week or week before, next time you talk to him, Red, could you come and talk to me? How can he be my personal Savior if he's talking to you? So God must go home with that. <laughs> so I've seen that happen. And if you went to the Christian church, you see it too. Because you saw people get holy, the Holy Ghost until the church service was over. And the Holy Ghost went home and they went home. <laughs> and then next Sunday, they get the Holy Ghost again. And then when the, when the reverend said, oh, okay, it's time to play that body, and they start put the tongue stop, the bones get wiped away, <laughs> not nobody cares, then it's over. And so they went. That's all the stage. They got to go stuff. And that in itself, the Pentecostal practice is also act. We call it a bin day. It's of the Yoruba faith. And we would play that Yahudunu, talking drum, which I would play for the tambourine. <laughs> and we would call on our ancestors, like I said before, they reached the Isle of Deity. The Muslims stole the name Obadala. When the word Oba in Yoruba means the Father of Him and Allah, the Most High. Obadala. And that's why Obatala colors in our ancient religion was blue and white, because it symbolized the sky and the Lord. They stole that too. <laughs> they stole everything. They stole what they call a pagan part of our culture. They call a pagan in our quick, old pagan that was going to rock. And they got a, a rock statue of Jesus in front of them, and they rock. He said the man standing with a hole in his hand, stabbing the wrist, blood dripping off of him. And then what I was going to say, we were the Bible. And he said, oh, in that statue there, I don't want to have God, though. <laughs> All right, okay, what about St. Nicholas and, and other saint over there, St. Christopher, 
and St. Anthony and St. Ralphie and St. Hawkins. What all this got to go around? All them Jesus do? Well, they didn't say who decided they were saints. Jesus, they wasn't even around when Jesus was born. Pope, Pope, who? Then who decided he's the Pope? Somebody was Pope in the Bible. Huh? Hey, hey, and so every time they kind of spoke, they kind of steal our dreams. The only reason why they can is because they dream in black and white and we dream in color. <laughs> they they, they want us, they take everything from us. When you see your fellow from Aberdeen, you don't make those mistakes. You, and he's doing ancestral identity. I bet you're right, if anybody open their wallet, take out a picture, you got somebody in there you love. You realize that I you worth it? Oh man, if a Muslim get mad at me, you know me. <laughs> but I asked him, I said, wait a minute. Oh, if pictures are a sin, how are we going to travel to Mecca with a passport with our picture on it? <laughs> that's a sin. Well, that's a sin. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that's a sin. Right. If I got a picture of my house, my wallet, my wife, and my two kids, am I going to throw that picture away because I love them? And my kids, I worship and adore them. You understand? Know anything I, if I die for them, I must worship and adore them. Am I violating the law? Mm -hmm. Oh, have you misinterpreted the Lord? Mm -hmm. Going to Mandelby, you go to Saudi Arabia, and they got big old pictures of their king all over the street. <laughs> and they get from the country you go to. They got pictures of their king. They got Gaddafi and Israel police. But when I do it, when I put up these faces on the wall, some of y'all go, is this some kind of paganism? <laughs> 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 you ain't asked him that, but you asked me that. Mm -hmm. You question everything I tell you, and you won't question nothing he says. When we gonna come around to it? And y'all gonna get up and get around to it with me? And if I realize I'm the best thing to happen to y'all. Right. Right. I'm the only cross. I'm the only one saying question everybody. Right. Right. Everyone don't say question me. He's bad man. He's a good brother. He's, he's clear. He makes very good points. You understand? But he never says, "Now ask me." Something about what I'm thinking. Right. He did once back in Brooklyn years ago, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. He said, ask the question. I said, all right. I got a good one. I said, Master Swab Muhammad is a law. He's a man person. What would he stand on when he feared her? You know what I'm That's a good question, brother. We'll get back to you. Let me get your address. Let me get your address. That's all right. I asked you a question and said, excuse me. He said, did um, Master Father Muhammad have a fingerprint? They said, yeah, he died and he needed a fingerprint. I thought fingerprint was to distinguish us from each other. And he all, and he died and therefore isn't he all of us? So he needed a fingerprint. By the way, who was Master Father Muhammad's blood today? Because, you know, I'd like to know when he was going to ask again. Oh, well, yeah, we have old blood. What's that thing? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I already knew this information because an African named Chef Dallas from Morocco gave me information. I was looking at my ass. I knew mean, he didn't know. So I just wanted to give my brother food for thought. I thought I wanted to stop and say, what is this blood that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, this man, I might die. You know, my mate lost his life over him. Parents took him, his ex lost his life over him. Two good brothers. Yeah, what is this blood that? Is he one of us? Catch the day, find out. Homeboy got eight blood. Type eight. Not one of us. Not Alice. But I also have our blood. That's the Arab who did too much mixing in with the French. And I lived in my living, Morocco. And they had to go over there, and they were speaking French. And they speak Arabic. So they had to took Arabic and changed it. <coughs> you guys didn't say Shahad. I said, what? <laughs> you thought they said Shahad? It's Shahad. My book, though. I gotta work with citizens. Get that French out of here. You're in French. You're going to be French on the French. They brought with them in some bottle of wine, too. Right. Some lip for making this song. They brought in there with them a hood called a Sinham, which was used by the Jewish for witchcraft. And all my mom, who was like a great day, came and said, That ain't us. Why do you think the baby's going to say? Because of the front of the bush. Because of that crown there. I don't know. So Egypt, in Arabic in Egypt, you know what they say? Ivy. They're trying to say Ivy. They say Ivy, yes, Ivy. 
They got so to all across the northern part of us. They turned it into French. Down to Mauritania, going out, they got inside. All in, all in the Ivory Coast, people were speaking French. Some people didn't want to speak Swahili, but it's Swahili. Swahili is Arabic and Bantu, a slave language. Coming out of Zanzibar. You know what Swahili is? It's a slave language. You understand? All the games got to go. The almighty, powerful master of the universe has given you your own language. Never before, no leader before has been given the gift of language for you. Right. They come with a whole bunch of dialogue, a whole bunch of race, a whole bunch of politics, a whole bunch of religion, but they didn't break the tongue. When you start speaking in your own language, you need your own mindset. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you start speaking the Wapit, your own tongue and tone, which was given to me to give to you, and when it's verified, I go on a blackboard and I show them where it comes from. Okay. And they will not be able to deny it. Because I beat them up on the internet 10, 15 times trying to question the Wapit. That's right. Beat them back, they back out off, okay? That's right. <laughs> That's our ancient tongue. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the script is a combination of all the different scripts that we have been influenced by being Hebrew, Arabic, Kuniba, all of them on that in our script. Had to combine the script, but not the tongue. Because you need the tone to get the body vibrate again. Mm -hmm. So align yourself back in with the universe and you are tuned with the universe. You need the drum again. You don't need that sample beat, you need real rhythm. <clears throat> they want you to have your own language. A little bit of time to learn it. They want you to have your own stuff. While you're sitting here now, the prayer book came out. Why? I'll tell you why. Because people kept coming to me saying, Pop, what about prayer? Pop, what about prayer? I say, you need prayer? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you need prayer? All right. So I went back and translated the manuscript and went to the Egyptian tablet and found all the positions to prayer and put them together, and put the, and put the ritual together, and then now you're going to present it with the way an ancient Egyptian prayed. Not the way the Muslims pray, they Because the Muslims are going to see you prostrate and say, you took that from us. They say, no, you know what we did. You took it from the philosophy. Muhammad's first migration was to Ethiopia. He stole prostration from there. You know? And they are Egyptian. Same family. When you learn your prayer, and you're going to tell you, you're going to learn it, because we're going to build a temple out there in a form of ceremony for prayer. Two permits away. We're in the process of doing two permits right now while you're sitting there. But I say you say two permits to be up. The third one is coming after that. The follow? The last one is for prayer and meditation under the permit. You're going to feel the power of your ancestors. <laughs> they are making a pilgrimage over there. You can't copy that from Mecca. No, 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 no. You're wrong. The people in Mecca copy it from Egypt. Wait a minute. Ammon Ovis from the Amon Temple in Karnak built a large black square switch and on the top of it was a scarab. And the high priest of Ram used to boil their heads and shave all their hair off their bodies bathe in holy water and take a seamless white robe, you can see this on the wall here, and wrap it around themselves, and then they would make seven circles around that huge black uh, stone. That's where the Muslims got it from. They put a piece of one in the corner and called the black stone. You see that? And tell the Muslim world that this stone was once white again. And because of the sins of humanity who did it, it turned black. That's okay. good. I'm giving you the Arabic and English. You understand? And every time I look at all the Muslims, I say, hey, 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 I was in Mecca. I was at the black stone like this. First of all, the black stone is not black, it's blue. It's brown. That's the first lie. It's not a black stone, it's brown. It's this color in Mecca, it's in my Mecca. It's not black. I know black is right. It's not a cold bone. 
Secondly, they say that it's a meteorite. And it's not that thing around here. You follow that? But the most important thing is, they tell the Muslim world, and every Muslim you know to go to Mecca, black Arabs have accepted that the stone was white and turned black from sin, but he is saying that sin is black. <laughs> now, every, every Hajj, you know, a Hajj who went to Mecca, who comes back and calls himself Hajj, has admitted that sin is black. And what am I? And he's looking at a brown stone when he's doing that. Subliminal. Now Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is supposed to be the best and the last of the prophets. Right? And he has white armpits, he say, in the Hadith of Bukhari. And he is the best prophet, meaning a good man with white armpits, then good must be white, and black must be, I don't need to listen to that. I don't need that no more. I don't need this subliminal trick. When you go to Aki, I was in You go to Mecca and you put a black drape for a building that was dedicated to the god, Uzma, who is really Isis of Egypt. The method, the Allah, that they got to hide the Quran with the female deity of the name Allah, is in the Arabic language. Alif, Lam, Lam, Ka. Tell me to have an open key in you to make it a word. Not even with a ha or talmabuta, which can be adjusted because talmabuta were added because there wasn't a okay or, or dot back in the original language. But that open key says they what in Allah's real name was Allah. Here's a very good question. How could Muhammad's father name be Abdullah before Muhammad was born? If Muhammad received the revelation that Abraham had as a Hebrew, now in Arabic, and that would be the first time the word Allah would be used. Because if you go back to Abraham's time, correct, he would have heard Elohim, Adonai, right, Shidi, Adon, Roy, Hashem, Yahweh, or Yahweh, but not Allah, except as Elo. So if Muhammad was the one who brought in the name Allah, as the Quran says, I reveal the Quran to you, Muhammad, in Lohat, your language, or the Samuq, your tongue, then what language was Muhammad's father speaking? Same tongue. So what was the name of the God? There's no new God then. Muhammad's father's name would have to be Abdullah, not Abdullah, because Muhammad came to get rid of the name. Abdullah and replace it with the name Allah. So they were worshiping Allah in Mecca, the head God of the Kaaba. How about you losing, y'all? Because the Lord knows we were at Muslims there. We understand something going on. Those who are the Muslims that won't tell us, I got talk, I talk a little Christian, a little Hebrew, a little Muslim. Like I got talk to everybody. Right now, there's a little Muslim thing going on. Nobody can see talking about it. Muslims know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So Muhammad's father's name is not Abdullah. His name is Abdullah. And Allah is a feminine form of female being, the wife of Allah. Who's Allah then? Osiris. Osul, they call it. In ancient, I mean, I mean ancient uh, Who become Isis or Asa. that? Allah, Allah. They'll, they'll, they'll deny it. The Kaaba is a record of Egyptian deity. The ritual of making a seven. The little saw around it is Egyptian. The kissing of the black stone, Egyptian. The wearing of the thick the white stain, the shaving, Egyptian. They want must, must lay in. Miss any word you want to give you out of Egypt, Hamid. We say Hamid, 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 Hamid. What's that? Ham. Ham is in the Quran, 28, the 15th chapter, 28 verse, when they see a big Arab as a silent Ham one. The word Ham is there for black mud. The Adam was created from. But that don't mean much to us. Because Adam was not the first man on the planet. We don't buy the story. You know why? Because where did Adam and Eve kids get their lives from, for one? 
And who was Cain afraid was going to kill him if nobody else there? He told God he's afraid and he puts him out the garden. Those who catch him outside the garden are going to kill him. Who was out there? The only people on the planet was Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. And Cain just killed Abel. The only three people left. So who is he telling Adam was going to kill him out there? <laughs> Why does the Bible say replenish the earth? What does it mean? They say, well, the word means not there because the Hebrew word is minutes. The word Hebrew word is minutes. And the word is to replenish, to refill. Not just minutes, the Hebrew fill. Minutes, to refill. Don't let them trick you. That's why they gave me the power of speaking in tongues. This is speaking in tongues. Not falling on the ground, going gibberish, humma humma humma, humma humma humma, that's not speaking in tongues, read your book of Acts, it tells you tongues and translation. And I not talk to you, and I say Adonai, Elohim, Adonai, Ahed. I'm speaking Hebrew. And I'm saying the great master of the Elohim, that great master is alone in power. I said the last that I have still on. I'm speaking to you now. I bear witness, or I am a child, that there's only one deity that creates through the law. That's speaking in tongues. And when your teachers and your preachers and your moms and your reverends, when they get up in front of you, and they want to quote the Bible, or the Quran, or the Tanakh, they're supposed to know the language. They're supposed to speak to you in tongues. The Spirit is supposed to move them to move you. Okay. And I know when I walk, and I can get real funky. I can get you in there crying. I can get you joyful in there. I can get you moved inside. Some of y'all are having a hard time sitting down. You want to get up and move. Because you get tight. Because the power of the most high is power to you. No, I'm <laughs> going stop it again. No, you ain't stopping me yet. No, I'm not saying I am the most high. I'm trying to say No, you gotta watch you, Nigga, because don't. Get out of here. 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 No, I ain't saying none of that. I say I'm just like you. That's what I am. I'm just like you. And I may appear a little smarter now, but if I keep talking, you'll catch up. And that's why I talk so long. But it's just drilling this information in. So I want you to leave out here with answers to your questions. And if I had to go to the bank, I'm breaking down the languages for you. I'll make sure when you leave here that you can verify what you're saying.